So I'm in charge of number one this week. Um, so your problem gives us our normal and our, our inversion allele arrangements for these chromosomes. Um, and it's telling us that suppose that these two chromosomes replicate prior to meiosis. So that's where this kind of comes in. It's going to duplicate itself in replication. Um, and then they're attempting to synapse during prophase one. What is the allele and centromere composition for the four products of meiosis if there is a crossover between S and T? So after we draw out our duplications, uh, we want to actually line them up so that they're on the S and T crossovers. So that way it makes more sense logically. Um, so you want both of them to be the same with ST being your direction. Um, and if you look here on the inversion, it goes kind of the opposite. So you have to flip them in order to make them line up in the right direction. Um, <clears throat> so to find our part, we gotta do a crossover uh, between these two middle ones. That's where the crossover will happen. But these outside ones are, don't have to deal with the crossover. They just kind of go their separate ways as if you want to say it that way. Um, so that gives us our products. So the first one, like our first one, it's going away. So it's going to stay the same. Our second product is going to be a product of our crossover. So if you want to read this, I kind of drew a line here where the crossover is happening. Um, you just read it here until you hit the line, and then you go down and you write out the actual crossover, and then write that out. So the first one is going to have one centromere because it's staying the same, and the second one will have two because it's going to cross over, get one here, and then across, and get another one here. For product three, it's going to do the same thing, except this one's going to cross with this one, and you won't have any centromeres because it's going to be your two tail ends crossing together. And number four is just going to be your last one that's not dealing with the crossover, so it'll stay the same and have just one centromere. All right, and then two is just vocab. So this is what we got. Um, for A, we got meiosis and then mitosis. For B, we got the paracentric inversion. C, first one was Turner syndrome and then familial down syndrome for the second one. D is your human liver cells. E is your cryducat. I'm not sure how you say that, but probably French. Uh, type A hemophilia for the next one. And then F, you get gene duplication, and G is alternate segregation. So for number three, um, for part A, Turner syndrome, we got 45 chromosomes. Jacobs, we got 47 chromosomes. Cryducat is a terminal deletion. I don't remember which chromosome, but it is a terminal deletion. And since an entire chromosome isn't removed, we kept it as 46 chromosomes. Familial Down syndrome is Robertsonian translocation. Same thing again, no chromosomes are actually removed. So we kept that at 46 chromosomes. And type A hemophilia is just an inversion. Um, previous two. Part B is the Charcot Marie II type IA and we assume that this was uh, formed from duplication and non-disjunction. Klein filter we put aneuploid, non-disjunction, and trisomy. And for part D, uh, type A hemophilia, we just put non-disjunction. All right, so I was responsible for number four. Bear with me, and my explanations may not be quite as scientific as they really should be. Okay, so I'm not going to read the whole question. I'm just going to go in for straight into it. So letter A, it says diagram the synapsis of the chromosomes in pro prophase 1. With uh, synapsis DNA re replication, um, we get the translocated uh, chromosomes uh, set there. Then your original chromosome from your parental or your paternal and your maternal alleles there. For B, it says identify the allele composition of the gametes produced by alternate segregation. With alternate segregation, you're always gonna have one cell with the complete alleles um, for mom and dad. For cell two, 
you're going to have your translocated, sorry, your reciprocal translocated alleles. Um, and then for letter C, sorry, I wrote everything wrong, so I went back up here for letter C. So in letter C, it says, identify the allele composition of the gametes produced by adjacent seg one segregation. Um, for this one, the easiest way it was for me to understand it was you get the ones together that are predominantly similar in the way that they're constructed. So for cell one, we use the paternal alleles. These matched predominantly with a couple of the translocated alleles from mom. And then cell two was just the reciprocal of dad. Most of the alleles came are moms with the three translocated alleles from dad. For D, it says identify the allele composition of the gametes produced by adjacent two segregation. Now with this one, um, it's kind, kind of like what C, but for uh, you're going to match up kind of the beginning of your, uh, your allele uh, sequence. And so you would go with your paternal allele's beginning, your complete paternal, paternal allele with the uh, translocated uh, paternal, uh, paternal and maternal alleles, and then same thing with the maternal side of things. The easiest way for me to remember this one was that you're always going to have one complete allele as well as an incomplete uh, alle uh, chromosome set. All right, so for number five, part A, uh, we are looking at a triploid cat. Its original chromosome number was 19. So what you do is you uh, take the diploid number, which was 38, cut that in half, that's your end value, multiply that by three, you get your 57 chromosomes. In part B of number five, uh, we had a monosomic error on chromosome 12. So basically one of the chromosomes were taken out on disjunction. And that results in 37 chromosomes. In part C, we have terminal, dele terminal deletion of chromosome seven. That doesn't really get rid of the chromosome, but it does get rid of a part of the chromosome. So we are stuck at 38 chromosomes. Uh, for part D of it, we had a Robertsonian translocation on chromosome 17 and 18. Uh, still keep the value of 38 chromosomes. And for reciprocal translocation on chromosome six and nine, same thing, it doesn't get rid of any chromosomes. So we're still stuck at 38 chromosomes. 